And thank you everyone for joining us here today. Um, we are going to be covering Walmart's APDP 201. So this is just past kind of an introductory beginner level course. I will actually send a link to our APDP 101 um, webinar that we have just in the chat. So if you guys haven't checked that one out, please do. But we're gonna dive a little deeper here today. So um, you have myself, I'm Melody Hayes. I'm going to be taking all of your questions and pitching it to the lovely Stacey Tan. So she is our VP of Retail Insights over here. She has over a decade's worth of experience in the supplier world, has been on all sides of um, the supplier world. She's seen it all. So um, just a lot of experience that we're excited to share with you guys here today. Um, and here's our agenda. So this is what we'll be covering. So we're going to just do a quick little recap of that 101 webinar that I was talking about previously. Um, we're going to talk about the dis how to dispute the different deduction types in APDP. Um, just kind of best practices in order to make your disputes the most successful way that they can be. And then we'll have a Q&A with Stacey and myself at the end. So um, please feel free to throw your questions in early and we'll try to grab that. And then at the, the end, after that hour's worth of content, we will be covering um, just who Supply Pack is, who our product is, and give you guys a little sneak peek into how we can help you with your Walmart deductions if you have them. All right, FAQs. So will you get a copy of the slide deck? Yes, we will send the slide deck and the recording in three to four business days. You'll get it in the same inbox that you signed up for this webinar. And um, we're usually pretty quick about that, but three to four business days um, is kind of the rough, rough estimate. Um, what is the best way to ask a question? So down at the bottom, you're going to see two little bubbles that say Q&A. That's going to be the best way for you actually to submit a question um, to make sure that I see it so I can um, pitch it over to Stacey's way. But there's the chat, which is a single bubble, um, which you can see um, some people have been responding in on their favorite their favorite toy. Um, that's the, the best way to actually engage with the entire group or share helpful information. That's where I'm going to be posting most of the links um, if, if Stacey mentioned any resources. So keep your eye on, on that. Awesome. And who is Supply Pike? I'll actually let you take this one, Stacey. Yep, definitely. Um, as Melody said, super happy to have everyone on the call today. We always like to do a quick introduction on who we are, just so y'all know you aren't listening to crazy folks, though that may <laughs> be left to be determined. Uh, but we are a Northwest Arkansas-based software company, and we really focus on helping our CPG partners reduce revenue loss uh, by automatically detecting and resolving retailer compliance issues. Um, so we really focus a, a lot on the Walmart Inc. bubble. So Walmart USA, Walmart Canada, Walmart.com, Target, Kroger and Amazon and pretty much anywhere that you are losing money, be it in compliance or co-ops or shortages, uh, we are here to help provide that visibility and also automate the process of getting all those dollars back. Um, so we work with about 500 different companies today. We're very proud to say that representing about $50 billion in retail impact uh, pretty much across the box. So we work with toy suppliers, uh, all the way to apparel, gen merch, electronics, groceries, so on and so forth. So we've got some really interesting visibility and insights uh, across the entire mass box. And you guys can kind of see across the bottom of the screen, some of the brands we are proud to consider part of the supply pack family. Um, and if we're not working with you today, hopefully one day we won't be. And without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and hop right into the content. As Melody mentioned, if you guys have any questions at all, please feel free to drop them in the Q&A section and we'll be happy to address them. Um, we always like to start with a little bit of level setting just to make sure we are all on the same page, uh, just because we know the world of finance is very, very vast <laughs> and we want to make sure that we're all kind of in the same boat together. So just as a brief reintroduction on what APDP is, you know, I'm going to kind of give us a little bit of, uh, of a pathway to, to talk through it. So really quickly, we always like to kind of share that Walmart really looks at rev loss kind of in three large buckets. Uh, so one of them is deductions, which we're going to be focusing on a lot today. And usually this is going to refer to off invoice deductions. So essentially, um, you know, you Walmart orders 100 cases from you, you invoice them for 100 cases, um, and then Walmart says, oh, we only received 80 of those cases, or you know, 20 of them were damaged, or whatever it is, we're not going to pay you in full. So anytime that you're invoicing them and they are not paying you in full, that is usually going to refer to an AP deduction. Generally speaking, if they are invalid, you can fight them. A lot of times people have success winning them, and usually you're going to dispute them through a portal called APDP. 
or the accounts payable dispute portal or through the settlement process. Um, although this has just recently been sunset and we're gonna give you guys a few updates on that. So that's kind of the big deductions bucket. There's also a very large compliance bucket, which I'm sure many of you guys are familiar with. And this is more gonna be on the AR side. And so this is Walmart invoicing you, the supplier, for any charges that maybe you fell out of compliance on for the different programs they have. So we mentioned here OTIF and SQEP or Square our popular programs. OTIF has been around for about five or six years now. So a lot of suppliers usually generally know how to handle it, generally know how to fight it. But obviously SQEP or SQEP, Supplier Quality Excellence Program is newer. It was officially launched in 2021, but fines weren't really a big part of that until last year. And we have seen that slowly creep up over time. Uh, so again, the, the big distinction here is that this is a little bit more arbitrary in that Walmart will set the rules that they want you to follow. If you fall out of compliance for those rules, they can fine you uh, for those non-compliant cases. Uh, and again, it's going to be an invoice to you. Why a lot of folks get these two mixed up is because if you don't pay that invoice, eventually they just go ahead and deduct it. So it comes across as a deduction, but it starts as an AR fine. So for this one, you're going to dispute those in high radius. Sometimes you're going to dispute it with your buyer. You'll see a little asterisk <laughs> throughout this presentation uh, because if there's one thing we all know, it's that your mileage may vary uh, when you're talking to Walmart. So by and large, they recommend that you dispute any compliance fines, both OTIF and SQEP through high radius. But of course, there are going to be the rare situations where you can't pull your buyer in and they can help kind of make decisions um, and, and help you guys with some of those fines. And the large, the large Last large bucket is the audits bucket. Um, and this is more for retroactive deductions. Usually it's going to cover a large time period. So usually over a quarter or a year or two years or whatever it is. And because of that larger time period, you're usually going to be assessed a large dollar audit. So let's just say, for example, you have an excessive defectives audit uh, for you know Q1 of 2023. You're going to see that come across for you usually like a six figure dollar amount. Um, this is performed by third party audit firms and you have to dispute it directly with that third party. Um, so it can be companies like PRGX, Apex Analytics, Connolly, so on and so forth. So we have a lot of information and resources around compliance fines. Uh, we did a whole thing around September. Uh, we have a lot of content around OTIF and we have a lot of content around audits as well. So I won't spend too much time here, uh, but if you guys are curious, you you can always check out Supplier Wiki to see those webinars and content on demand. We will be, as I mentioned earlier, kind of focusing more on the deductions piece today. Um, so one last thing that I like to call out, because again, if you're maybe newer to the world of Walmart or finance within the world of Walmart, um, those fines that we just talked about in this slide can actually stack. So you can get hit with an OTA fine, a sweat fine, a post audit, and an AP deduction on a single PO, which is crazy uh, first. And along with that, as we notice, you guys can see kind of across the bottom, there's different ways to dispute each of these chargebacks or deductions. And so if you are trying to go after this for a single PO, you have to basically, number one, fight it four times if you did get all four. And number two, you have to know kind of where you need to go to fight each fine. And then none of them are interlinked uh, in that, let's just say, for example, you get an OTA fine and a deduction for a shortage um, that is probably invalid. Even if you get that AP deduction fine one back or AP deduction one back, you still have to go fight the OTIF fine and vice versa. Walmart's four departments don't talk to each other, uh, so they won't automatically reverse things. Um, again, we like to call that out just in case, hey, maybe you thought, as long as I got the deduction, I'm good. No, you have to fight all four. So not the most fun, but you know, as, as GI Joe says, knowledge is power. Um, and hopefully you guys can start tackling these a little bit more strategically if you aren't already thinking about your business in this way. So along with that, kind of just a high level of the tools, again, won't go too deep, so we have time for the other content. But generally speaking, if you are in charge of managing deductions at your company, these are really kind of the three main apps that we would recommend checking out. Uh, first of them is Accounting Scorecard, which is uh, what we call you know, the temperature check of invoices. It's measuring your invoice accuracy uh, through invoice match and EDI accuracy. APIS, the Accounts Payable Inquiry System, is really where you're going to get all the actual like raw 
data of the different invoices and chargebacks that you've gotten. And then APDP, which is a little bit newer, the accounts payable dispute portal is where you actually go in to fight those specific deductions. Now, there are a lot of like, there's a constellation of apps that can help support you when you're kind of trying to fight deductions. So we know folks that will pull data out of DSS, out of OTIF, uh, out of the ASN scorecard, so on and so forth. Uh, but these are kind of the three main ones that we would recommend you look at if you are not already checking on these kind of on a regular basis. So again, kind of mentioned APDP, Accounts Payable Dispute Portal. It is the retail link application for disputing all AP deductions. It should look something like this. Um, and you should have access to it automatically. If you don't, I would check with your Retail Link admin. And if they don't have access, you should be able to reach out to the Retail Link uh, help desk and they can help you know, grant you access to this application. You don't have to pay for this or anything like that. Um, you should just be able to get access to this as a supplier. So you can search for a deduction. We're going to walk you guys through what that process looks like. Uh, describe reasons for disputes. So if you get a deduction that you don't agree with and want to fight it, you can do that. Uh, provide any additional detail, attach proof documentation, and basically wait for Walmart's approval or denial. So one other thing that we like to call out, so we like to share a lot of insights just across the industry because we see, again, just you know so many different suppliers. Um, the big update this year has been that the settlement program has officially been sunset. So this is something that maybe you guys have heard of, or maybe your company used to utilize, but usually it was for the midsize and larger suppliers. And essentially they would have a quarterly settlement where they would say, Hey, you shipped us, you know, these 5,000 POs this quarter. Um, and we gave you deductions worth a million dollars or whatever it is, um, you know, we know that's probably not accurate. So let's agree and handshake on an amount on an amount that you know you want to get paid back. And usually you would see pay payback amounts anywhere between 70 to 90 percent, just depending on how strong of a relationship you had with Walmart. So that has officially been sunset. And now all supplier teams have to utilize APDP to individually dispute. Uh, any deductions they receive. Now, Walmart did add something called the Mass Dispute Creation Tool or MDC to help offset retiring settlements. The idea with MDC is that you can attach 500 deduction disputes at a time, but and so they're like, hey, we don't have settlement anymore, but now you can do 500 at a time through MDC. It's going to be great. Uh, but what they failed to mention is that MDC does not allow you to attach proof documentation. And as you guys, I'm sure, are familiar, proof documentation, your BOLs, your PODs, your supplier agreements, whatever it is, is the silver bullet for you to actually win those disputes. So you can go and submit 500, but essentially, you know, you can't provide any proof. And so there's, we see usually there's an auto approval rate of only 8% and everything else gets denied. And then you have to then go in and dispute those claims manually anyway. Um, so not exactly the best solution. Um, you know, a lot of teams, even with MDC are being forced to still basically individually dispute the remaining 92%. Um, so again, if you were on the settlement program before, this is new, this is probably a new wish pain point for you guys. Um, as I kind of mentioned, a lot of different retail link apps to go in to research and actually find out the information to dispute. Usually it takes about 20 minutes per dispute because of that research process. And then again, you have to now go find that proof documentation, download it from your carrier portal or whatever it is, go into APDP, upload it, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So usually, again, this is an average. We've seen about 20 minutes per dispute. And you have to know kind of how to tackle Walmart's 75 plus deduction codes, because of course, every deduction code has its own kind of format that is required, its own proof documentation that is required, etc. So generally speaking, a lot of teams just aren't equipped to dispute manually, because like, who has time to go in and fight 100 claims a week, um, especially when you guys are very busy and have a lot of more important things to do. So a lot of times teams will kind of turn to some form of automation or outsourcing or whatever it is, because the current process is just not really that sustainable. 
So I will throw out there too, a lot of times, a lot of folks are like, well, I wasn't on settlement, so it doesn't really matter to me. It doesn't really affect me. But I think there's kind of a larger issue at play, which is now because the PNGs and the Unilevers of the world who were using settlement before are now submitting tens of thousands of individual disputes a week, what's happening is Walmart and the team that they are utilizing to review these claims, so GenPact, um, basically is now completely overwhelmed by the amount of submissions that have been happening. Um, so right now we are in fact seeing uh, longer response times from Walmart. Um, we have heard from suppliers that have claims at least six months old. We know there are some as far back as November, 2022 that are still open, which is kind of crazy. I will say kind of the one good thing, I guess, is that there doesn't really seem to be a rhyme or reason why or how Walmart is tackling deductions. So it's not like they're only, you know, they're starting with November and then moving forward. We see that they're also tackling stuff, you know, in January of this year, in August of this year. Um, so obviously the further back it goes, the fewer claims are still open. Uh, they're working through them, but it is slow. Um, on average, again, just speaking averages, so you're going to have better performers, worse performers. Um, it used to take about 30 to 45 days to get uh, some sort of decision from GenPact. Now we've seen that get lengthened to about 45 to 60 days again on average. So you're going to see some auto approves. You're going to see some that are literally a year old, but on average is about 45 to 60 days. Um, so yeah, that's kind of where settlement is. And again, we like to just set the stage so you guys know what is going on and why it may be taking longer for you to get responses back um, from the Walmart or Genpack team. Uh, we've heard from folks that they are working on staffing this team up. We've heard a lot of different rumors. So obviously take all of this with a grain of salt. We've heard they're working on staffing teams up. We've heard they're potentially thinking about bringing back bring it back to the States. Right now it's been offshored uh, to a team in India. So there's a lot of different things that I think Walmart is evaluating to try and figure this out. Um, but yeah, I would say, you know, stay on it. Um, one other kind of pro tip I'll give you guys before we hop into, you know, more of the meat of the presentation um, is we've heard sometimes because, you know, the vast volume of claims that are coming through. Um, the GenPAC team is, is basically just kind of like making decisions without taking as much time as they could. So you're seeing a lot of false negatives where people are getting their claims denied. Um, and then, you know, it's just so that they can clear the queue. Um, and I would definitely take a look at any of the things that you've gotten denied as a result of that, um, because we have some situations that are very cut and dry, should have been one back, they got denied, they redispute it, and then Walmart's like, oh yeah, our bad, um, and then they will actually approve it. So just something to, to look at and, and check there. Okay, so I'm going to hop into how you actually, so tactical part of the presentation is how you actually dispute the different deduction types in APDP. Uh, so there are kind of three main pathways for AP disputing. So the remaining um, settlement disputes. So anything that, so again, Walmart did settlements quarterly. Um, essentially, if you have any claims that still fall within those, that the quarters of settlement that maybe you've not gotten a decision on yet, you cannot dispute them in APDP. So let's just say, for example, your last quarter for settlement was Q4 of 2022. If you have a claim, a shortage claim from November of 2022, you cannot dispute that in APDP because that will still fall under the settlement um, kind of time frame. So you will email EBS if you need any assistance or guidance, and we're going to provide some con uh, some contact information to get some updates there. Um, most other codes are going to be handled in APDP. Um, and so you can basically follow the regular process for claim or invoice level disputes. And then right now handled outside of APDP are going to be these codes here. As I mentioned earlier, AR fines like OTIF and SQEP are going to be handled in high radius. So if you guys don't have access to high radius right now, it is a third party application. Um, so I would say, you know, make sure you have access to that. We can provide information on how you can actually get that information. Um, and then post audits as we mentioned, it's going to flow through a separate third party. Um, and then you can basically address those post audits through email with that third party. So if you get a post audit claim from Apex Analytics, as an example, you can basically correspond directly with Apex and they will handle your post audits. Um, so these are, gen these are the three kind of general pathways for that. 
Um, and then in AP, so then wanted to give you guys another quick uh, information. Uh, APDP released an update uh, as of July of this year, um, and this is talking about tax only disputes. Um, so I'm not going to read uh, all of this, as Melody mentioned, you guys will get a copy of this presentation after today. Uh, but just FYI, there are some new codes that aren't necessarily going to flow through APDP. So just making sure that you guys are staying on top of kind of the different types of information that Walmart is sending out. Usually, um, if you have access to Retail Link, you should be able to, to check out their announcements. Um, they also do a pretty good job of updating, uh, you know, information on either the Academy page um, or FAQ page pages kind of in Academy. So just FYI there. Um, so again, kind of mentioning um, for the remaining settlement disputes. So again, if you guys have claims that fall within those uh, dispute timeframes that you, um, you know, cannot dispute through APDP necessarily, um, you'll want to reach out to EBS, the Enterprise Business Solutions team at Walmart. They are an internal finance team at Walmart, um, and they will be able to give you guys a lot of guidance on, on how to handle that. Okay, so again, kind of mentioned, and I'll go over this really quickly. So again, we can get into the more tactical side, the two paths in APDP that we mentioned. Individual disputing um, is, again, when you decide to go after one individual dispute at a time. Um, again, you're going to have to fill out all of the information for one claim. You then provide the description and attach any proof documentation that you have. Um, Usually APDP will have an automated check. So we're not entirely sure what the formula is, uh, but sometimes for certain types of claims that fall under a certain dollar threshold, they can give you an automatic response and basically approve it or deny it. Um, if they aren't able to give you that automatic response, then it falls into the queue for a human being at the GenPAC team to actually review that documentation and then submit the information. Um, and then we kind of mentioned earlier that mass dispute creation, MDC, more of the spaghetti at the wall type uh, technique. So you're going to submit 500 claims within a date range, and that date range is usually about 10 days. Um, and as we mentioned, MDC does not allow you to submit proof documentation, so you only get that automated check. Um, and then essentially, if you get the denial, then it will fall into kind of the quote unquote individual dispute path. So a lot of teams, what they're doing is they're starting with MDC, basically trying to get as much automatically, you know, approved as they can. And then whatever is denied, again, on average, that 92%, then they, you know, will basically then do the individual dispute path from there. So definitely um, you can do that. We always recommend doing the individual dispute kind of from the get-go if you can do it and if, and if you've got the resources to do it, um, because obviously when things get denied, you kind of burn your one matchstick, so to speak, or you get sent to the back of the queue. So again, if things are open all the way back to 2022, you know, it's going to take a longer period of time um, for you to, to get your claims actually reviewed. So our general philosophy and recommendation is submit it correctly the first time so that you're not having to, you know, handle denials or cancellations the second time. Um, so yeah, so how you actually go about disputing claims is so you can cre create a dispute from a claim if there is a record in APIS. So this is a screenshot of APIS. Obviously, this is kind of dummy data. Um, so you can actually look at, you know, hey, you see these negative dollar amounts, um, and usually it's going to have a deduction code associated with it. So hey, on this, you know, example claim, you've gotten, you know, two code 22s and one code 57. Um, and they, you know, you basically were deducted this amount of money for you to decide whether that's valid or invalid and decide if you want to fight. So let's say you decide, hey, this is invalid. I know for a fact that I shipped this in full. I'm going to go ahead and create uh, a dispute in a APDP. Uh, so what you're going to do is you're going to search for a claim in APDP. And again, if you guys are following along at home, you're more than welcome to, uh, but you will search for that claim record and then you can create a dispute from that record. And then from there, you're going to create and provide the individual details for every claim line that you want to challenge. Now, one thing that we want to call out is because a dispute can be created for every claim line. So for every single type of every deduction line that you can
can get, it is possible to have multiple statuses within a single claim or deduction. So you can get, you know, let's just say these two approved, these one is pending and one is denied. Um, and so it kind of, you know, what used to be one deduction, one dispute, it now can kind of splinter off into multiple statuses, multiple, you know, kind of disputes per claim line, which makes it that much harder for you to keep track of, unfortunately. Uh, but yeah, so you're going to go ahead in the top uh, right corner, hit the create dispute button, um, select the vendor number that you are wanting to create the dispute from. And then essentially, are you trying to create the dispute based on the claim or the invoice? So different types of codes, you know, will fall under these different buckets. We won't get it too far to the weeds today, but a lot of free resources on supplier wiki. Um, and then essentially you can either type in the claim number if you have it, or you can search from a date range. So let's say, hey, we are in October and I'm working on September's claims. So I'm gonna look for dates in that September time range. And if you use a date function, obviously it'll show you kind of a list of all the claims that fall within those dates. And then you can pick the one that you want to work on. Uh, so one thing that I will note um, is that you can only select a date range of 10 days or fewer. Uh, so not everyone knows that. And sometimes you may not you know, get the results that you expect. So you do have to limit your search range to 10 days kind of chunks at a time, which of course makes it a little bit harder for you to actually, um, you know, let's say work on all of September, if that's what you want to do. Um, so from there, you're going to see the full list of claims that you've received. Um, and then let's just say in our example, hey, I want to fight, you know, this particular invoice number, you can go ahead and hit the create dispute button. Um, and then it'll open that up for you to then uh, go into. Um, so this is what it's going to look like once you've selected that example claim that you want to go fight. Um, you'll need to make sure that you check whichever boxes that you actually do want to go fight. Um, so you may go, oh, this is actually valid. Uh, this quantity discount is valid. Or you may go, oh, actually we did short ship on this particular item. It's valid. So we're not going to fight it. We really only want to fight claim, claim line number one just as an example. But again, if you want to fight all of them, you need to make sure that you are clicking all of them. Um, and then you need to make sure that you are also obviously providing the description. This is what the GenPack team is going to review. And it doesn't have to be like a paragraph. So you don't have to give them, you know, a, an essay on why you should get paid back for this. But if you can say something as simple as, hey, this has been shipped in full here, you know, please see attached POD. Um, and that is usually more than sufficient for them to kind of review any of the documents that you attach. Um, and then you should be good to go from there. Um, and then as we talked about a little bit earlier, obviously proof documentation is going to be the silver bullet. If not, it becomes he said, she said. So if you have PODs or BOLs or supplier agreements or buyer email or whatever it is, um, you know, you can essentially hit attach proof um, and then upload everything that you need to and have that all attach. And then pretty much from there, you can fire off that dispute and then it'll enter the queue for the GenPack team to review. So uh, just an FYI on the different types of file formats that are acceptable. Um, usually most times people are going to have like a PDF of their supply agreement or BOL or whatever, uh, or a screenshots or a JPEG. We've not really ever seen any issues with this, but just so you guys have an idea of the different types of files that are accepted. Um, so from there, once you've added all your dispute information, you can hit the next button. Um, and essentially that's kind of putting it in this like almost draft status. Um, so if you need to, you can always hit previous to go back and edit anything. Um, if you hit save, you can, you know, save that and come back to it at a later time. One thing I will note, kind of another pro tip for you guys is that drafted disputes are saved for 14 days. So if you are not submitting the dispute after that time, usually the system will cancel that dispute out completely and you have to start from scratch. So um, again, not the end of the world by any means, but we always like to call this out because some folks will be like, oh, I'm still waiting on shipping documents for my warehouse. I'm just gonna create a bunch of docu you know, a bunch of draft disputes. Um, and then when the documents come in, I'll submit them all at once. Um, and then we all know life happens. And next thing you know, you didn't get the documents that you needed. And now, you know, the 30 disputes that you created um, have been canceled out of the system. So just something to, to think about and be aware of, um, just so y'all know that. And then, oops. 
from there, oops, sorry guys, from there. Um, so obviously if you are ready to submit it, you've attached all the documents that you want to submit. Um, after that, you basically kind of hit the submit button, pretty self-explanatory. Um, and then you'll get a window showing all of the dispute case numbers, uh, as well as the dispute numbers, which, you know, you can then start to keep track of in, in APDP. We have some folks that will create Excel spreadsheets and key this in. You can do that as well. Um, but basically once you hit that submit button, now it's in the queue uh, and it should be ready to go just in terms of getting ready to be reviewed. Um, so one thing we like to call out, if you guys have been doing this for a minute, like Melody and I have, which definitely ages us, <laughs> um, APDP so is, is a newer process. They used to utilize something called direct commerce. Um, that was a third-party program, obviously now that has been you know brought in-house to APDP. Uh, so we just want to make sure that you guys are aware of the new kind of terminology there. So pending Walmart uh, is what it used to be called a DCI. It is now Walmart Research. So basically it's it's in Walmart's queue for them to look at. Pending vendor is now called supplier action. So there will be times when Walmart says, hey, um, we actually need more proof from you. Uh, you attached the wrong VOL or whatever it is. Um, they'll kick it back to you. It will be in supplier action status. You need to just make sure that you know, you're taking care of that. Um, rejected is now denied. So basically they have reviewed um, your, your, you know, dispute and they have decided that you did not provide sufficient proof, um, or whatever it is. And so they will deny that they can, uh, canceled is still canceled and then approved is still approved. So canceled, um, when let's say your, your drafts can get canceled out of the system, uh, supplier action, you actually have a set amount of time to respond to their questions. I believe it's a week. Um, so let's just say in that example that I gave, Hey, you accidentally attached the wrong POD. Could you attach the right one? If you don't act on that within, I believe it's seven days, it'll automatically cancel out of the system. And then you kind of have to start from scratch. And then obviously approved is what we are all hoping for. Uh, that is when Walmart has uh, reviewed your claim and has decided that, yes, you are correct. We should have paid you for this. They will approve it. And then you'll get paid later on. Um, so there is a concept of negative approvals. Uh, um, we don't see it very often, but we would, always like to share it um, just in case you run across it and you're like, what on earth is this? Uh, so Walmart, we have seen, can approve a dispute and then re-deduct it under a different claim code. So a very common example that we see is they'll go, oh, it's a code 2224 shortage related code. You fight that and go, no, 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 here's my POD. I I, you know, ship this in full, they can come back and basically re-deduct uh, as a different code. Usually we see a 14 or 15, so like a concealed shortage. Um, and basically what that means is, hey, when, you know, we Walmart received the case, it looked like it was full, but then when we opened up, you didn't have all your inner cases inside. And so we originally thought it was full, but actually it was not, it was a concealed shortage. Um, and those can be particularly painful to fight because it really does become a little bit of a he said, she said. Um, we have had folks, just so you guys know, again, just sharing insights that will literally take pictures of pallets and master cases, every single one that they ship out in case they get a 14 or 15 so that they can go, well, here's what the pallet looked like when we shipped it out from our door. I don't understand how you're saying there was a concealed shortage. Uh, so definitely a lot more manual, uh, but just something that we want to share as like a, again, insight for you guys that we've seen work for some suppliers. Now, of course, we're not you know, blind to the fact that that takes resources and time and people and money. So a lot of times, you know, you just have to make the business decision on whether that makes sense for your company. So if you're getting one random code 14, code 15 a week for a few hundred dollars, like it may be worth it to just, you know, take it on the chin. Uh, we have some folks that, you know, get rampant code 14s and 15s where they say it is worth it for me to go and invest the time and the process to try and help mitigate this. So um, definitely something to think about on what are the costs and the benefits for any new system or process that you want to implement um, at your company. Um, okay, so 
Along with that, I um, want to talk through really quickly kind of APDP best practices. Again, um, as I mentioned, we work with about five different suppliers today from the mom and pop shops all the way up to Fortune 100. And these are just some of the techniques that we've seen kind of best in class suppliers utilize uh, when trying to maximize getting dollars back um, from deductions and chargebacks and things like that. So first things first is this preparation checklist. I am not going to bore us all <laughs> and read through this checklist, um, but consider this some light bedtime reading. I think these are really, really good questions to ask your team um, to, to even start the conversations if you guys aren't already thinking about your business in this way. So just an example, does your AR team know how to dispute claims in APDP? Have they done it before? If not, you know, maybe they were on settlement before and they were used to just submitting, you know, a spreadsheet and then sending in 10 PODs, but now there's obviously a completely separate process. Um, do they need additional training? Uh, if so, do you know where to go get that training? Do you have folks in the industry you can talk to? Do you have contacts at Walmart you can talk to? You know, can you have them sit on supplier wiki webinars, whatever it is? Again, just kind of thinking through, you know, is everyone ready to even tackle this correctly? Do you have the people in place to handle the additional work? So, you know, we gave an example. Hey, if you if it takes about 15 to 20 minutes for a dispute, you can just do the math, right? So you can do three, maybe four an hour. Hour, um, 40 hours a week, you know, you're lucky to get through 120, maybe 160. And that's assuming you have someone completely dedicated to one account only. Uh, and do you have that person? Uh, are they doing Walmart and Target and Kroger and Amazon? Um, or do they have to close books and also fight deductions? So again, just kind of think about like, what is the time that, you know, you need to really dedicate to this? And do you have resources in place to do that? And then, you know, obviously kind of continue to go down that list. Another kind of pro tip that we like to share, again, this is across um, the millions of disputes that we've helped our suppliers submit. Um, Codes 22, 24, and 25, so all three are shortage-related codes, usually will make up the vast majority of kind of the dollars and the count for a lot of suppliers that ship to Walmart. Um, so we always say, you know, obviously, if you're going to create an action plan for, okay, I know I'm getting thousands of deductions a month, I don't know where to start, start with shortages usually. Most of the time, suppliers are going to know, you know, whether they're valid or not, because you know whether you ship the product. Most of the time, you're going to have the proof documentation that you need because you know your 3PL or your carrier will have it. And then these oftentimes have a very, very high win rate. So if you're gonna go for the most bang for your buck, we recommend always starting with shortages and then later on kind of then saying, okay, shortages, we've got a good process in place. We feel good about it. What is the next biggest bucket? Is it, you know, allowances? Is it returns? Is it handling fees? Whatever it is, that's how you kind of determine where you want to start and put the most effort in. Um, another thing is kind of understanding the new dispute workflow. Uh, so again, if you guys are moving from settlement or if you're newer to Walmart and trying to figure out, okay, like what do, what do I actually do here? <laughs> uh, we recommend checking out deductions daily or weekly. Um, daily, if you've got the time, weekly, you know, it's usually a best practice. You want to have a process in place to actually research these. So do you know which applications you need to go into, making sure that you are pulling, you know, hey, in DSS, you can pull Walmart's actual receipt data. In Nova, you can actually pull Walmart's receipt data, data by PO. Um, so you can kind of check your shortages against this data. It's very effective to use Walmart's data against them because you can say, hey, you yourself said that you got these 10 cases, please pay me back in full for them. Um, you'll want to do validity checks from your research. And then if it is valid, if you really did short on a specific PO, obviously you're going to write off, write it off, and then make sure that you are communicating that back to the rest of the team. I think that this is a big portion that a lot of folks aren't really addressing or thinking about nowadays. And we'll talk about kind of, again, kind of the next gen accounting team and what that looks like. But a lot of times teams today are very siloed, right? So the supply chain does their supply chain thing, sales does their sales thing, finance does their finance thing. And what happens is kind of two ways. Number one, you don't always know like, hey, should I fight this? Should I not fight this? Did we ship this? Did we not ship this? So there's, you know, friction in that. 
So downstream, but also upstream, Hey, you know, we did research this and we did find out that we did ship in full. Um, and maybe, or, or sorry, we did short ship it, or maybe we got the squip fine because we didn't have two barcodes on the case or whatever it is. Are you closing that loop and making sure that you're communicating that learning with your master item data team or your packaging team or whoever it is so that you can mitigate the inflow of charges moving forward. And then of course, you know, on the flip side of that, if they are invalid, again, do you have your proof <laughs> in a easy to get to place? Um, a lot of times we'll work with teams before working with Supply Pike, they'll have that quintessential filing cabinet in some corner of a warehouse somewhere with like a giant stack of PODs or BOLs. You have a system to process that, read them, find them, associate them with the right claims, so on and so forth. So again, I think it's important to just start thinking through this if you guys aren't already thinking about your business in this way. Um, and then really quickly, just to touch on this. So obviously, once you get a specific resolution, if you're approved, um, and not paid, making sure that you're following up with that because that does happen. It is it is rare, I will say, but of course you want to make sure that that loop is closed. So if you're not getting paid, follow up. And if you get paid, great. Um, you know, again, kind of, are you translating those learnings to make sure that this does not happen in the first place? And then if you're denied, you do have the option to redispute twice. So do you have a process in place to then redispute if needed? Um, again, do you have a process in place to even review the denials that you get? Because sometimes you're going to get a false negative. Um, you know, don't always just take it on face value. Oh, Walmart reviewed it. So it's got to be right. So I'm just going to write off this money. Um, there is a lot of money out there that you, is still rightfully yours that you should try and go after. So kind of the, the TLDR, too long, didn't read, I would say, is, is really what should suppliers be doing now is taking the time to plan for required resources. So again, kind of sit there and understand like, you know, if you guys are more on like the director, supervisor, VP level, and maybe you've not walked through a dispute process with your AR team or your credit manager, sit with them, watch them do it and see, do they have the resources that they need to, to tackle every single deduction? So kind of plan on that. Uh, train them on the new processes because processes are changing fairly often. Uh, again, are you guys doing a monthly check in Academy or FAQs or the retail link announcements to make sure that you are up to date on things like that? So a, an easy example is OTIF. You used to dispute through your buyer. You no longer do that. You do it through high radius. Um, there wasn't a big announcement about that. Uh, Walmart essentially updated their FAQ documents um, in March of last year. And we are still working with suppliers a year and a half later that you know weren't checking FAQs because fair enough, who it is, um, that we're still trying to get things done through their buyer and that was not the right course. And so, hey, now you've just lost 18 months where you could have been finding OTIF quote unquote correctly because you didn't know about the change. So do you have, again, resources that you can turn to? Supplier Wiki is a good free one uh, or someone that's checking FAQs all the time. Making sure you're buttoned up on proof documentation. Uh, we we will beat a dead horse on this, guys. At Supply Pike, we preach the importance of proof documentation because that is really what's going to help you get your money back. So again, do you have processes? Do you know where they are? Uh, we, For example, we work with folks that use utilize UPS and FedEx. They will actually purge documents after 90 days. Um, and so a lot of times what happens is, you know, hey, I don't have time to go after these deductions now. I'll get, I'll get to them later. It's going to be fine. You know, four months later, I'm like, okay, now I'm ready to tackle these deductions, log into UPS. Oh my gosh, all of my documents are, go are gone. So if that's the case for you guys, are you downloading your documents regularly? Are you labeling them correctly? Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then of course, making sure that you're creating and communicating new processes to cross-functional teams. So again, we're really, really big fans on, it can't just be finance that handles this. It can't just be the supply chain team that handles this. You know, a lot of the best in class teams that we work with create almost like a command center where you have a representative from finance, a representative from supply chain, a representative from sales, and they're all communicating, oh, you know, hey, we're executing this promo, get ready for it on the back end, so on and so forth. Um, so yeah. I'm going to go ahead and kind of zip through these just because I want to make sure that we are giving you guys enough time to ask any questions. Uh, but again, what a lot of our suppliers are doing today, 
identifying the major pain points. So do you even know where you're losing money right now? Uh, because a lot of times, and I say this with a lot of love for Walmart, because I called on them for a long time, but reporting is not always the easiest to get out of a retail link. So do you know where you're losing money? Uh, and then when you do, do you, you know, you basically it's kind of when you understand the rules of the game, you can play the game better, right? So if you understand shortages are our biggest pain point, hey, do we have the supply chain team, the packaging team, the proof documentation team? Are they aware? And are we creating strategies to, to mitigate that? Um, and then again, kind of, as we mentioned, planning for those required resources. So is it external resources? Can you invest in software and automation? If you really are getting the thousand claims a week, like, you could create a 20 person team if you wanted to, or can you leverage software and automation either in-house or, or, you know, external, if you guys are a larger organization, can your IT team help to build a solution? Um, I think that's important for you to start those conversations because a lot of times what we find is IT teams will have projects planned a year out. So their 2024, like building development schedule may already be set. So, hey, are you willing to take the hit for another year if they can't build you something until 2025? So again, just questions to start thinking about. Do you know where to find that third-party education and guidance? If, for example, software is on in the cards for whatever reason, do you know where you can hire things out, you know, for contractors, things like that? Only caveat that I'll throw with, with this last portion, um, and obviously I'm a little biased being at Supply Pike, but again, as you guys notice, we, we lean very heavily onto the education and getting better aspect, obviously getting paid is step one. You want to get every dollar back, but you want to learn and you want to continuously improve as an organization. And what we find is when folks contract or use outside agencies, that learning loop isn't closed because basically you're saying, here's all my deductions. I don't know what to do with them go and just go get me money back. And then yes, you will get that check back, which is wonderful, amazing, but then you'll never learn. Um, so it's just something to think about there. Um, and then obviously, you know, if you maybe have more resources, larger organization, whatever it is, kind of think through what those internal processes are. So create systems for storing proof documentation, Remember, take a shot every time I say proof documentation. Uh, do you have a communication plan for internal teams and what free resources do you have for, for training? Um, so I'm going to go ahead and skip through this just because I think, you know, obviously you guys will get access to this deck later on, but it's just kind of building on. So like, hey, now we know what the problems are. What do we do, you know, kind of three to six months from now? So trying to give you guys a pathway. Uh, so, hey, what should we be doing today? What should we be doing three to six months from now? And what should we be doing one to two years from now? So with all that money that you're going to get back, hey, is it reinvesting in ROI to Walmart initiatives? Is it now that, hey, we've got Walmart buttoned up, we are good to go. Now let's start focusing on Target or, you know, whichever smaller retailers it is that you guys support. So kind of things to think about there. Okay. I have talked a lot. <laughs> I will take a pause here. Um, and Melody, are there any questions that I can help answer? Um, happy to go after them now. Awesome. We do have a few questions. So are you ready? I'm ready. Let's do it. All right. So we have a question from Eddie. Um, Stacey, are you saying that Walmart has a 8% auto accept? So yes, I, I am saying that. Um, and again, you know, I, I make this joke, but that's not really a joke. Your mileage may vary. So this is on average. This is across the 500 suppliers that we work with, which is a pretty good sample size. But yes, anything that is submitted through an MDC has an, through MDC has about an 8% auto approval rate and everything else then flows uh, through individual disputing. So again, we also talk with folks that are like, oh, well, I've actually gotten 25% auto approval through MDC, but we have also talked to folks that have gotten a 2% auto approval through MDC. So, you know, I, I won't necessarily say, hey, you are going to get 8% every time, but that has been the average that we have seen utilizing the MDC process. Yes. Yeah, across our customers. So yeah, my mileage may vary. Um, <laughs> awesome. So what is the turnaround time, I'm guessing, for an individual dispute? 
Yeah, great question. So I'll kind of talk to the supplier side and then I'll talk to the to the Genpack Walmart side. So kind of on the supplier side, turnaround, usually this is actually kind of interesting. So we do a lot of benchmarking data. So if you guys are curious about benchmarking, uh, happy to share some information with you guys too. Uh, so actual work time is usually about 20 minutes, as I mentioned. It's, you know, hey, I logged into Retail Link. I see the claim come through on APHIS. I decided it's in, you know, now I've got to go. Usually I got to look at my ERP to see if that's valid. Did we fight it or, you know, did we actually ship it or not? Okay, I've decided that it's invalid. Now I may go to DSS to pull an inventory receipt report. I may go into Nova. Um, okay, confirm Walmart actually did receive it in full. Now I'm going to go to my FedEx carrier portal, um, and I need to go find my POD for claim one, two, three, four, five. And okay, they have it. Great. I could submit it. We're good to go. Maybe they don't have it. And now I have to go reach out to my account manager at FedEx and ask for it, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So on average, actual work time, about 20 minutes. I think a really interesting stat for a lot of, again, this is across our customer base, uh, but most suppliers before coming to Supply Pike take an average of 140 days to even dispute. So because again, you guys have a billion other things to do, uh, what happens is you'll go, okay, I got this deduction. I know I need to come after it. I don't have time right now. I'll come back to it later. 140 days is the average time to even act on the dis on the deduction. So just so you guys know, maybe faster where you are. If so, awesome. Uh, if not, that's kind of the industry benchmark for before automation. Um, and then from the Walmart Genpack side, as I mentioned, you know, depending on the dollar amount and code, you could get an auto approval from Walmart same day or next day. That does happen. Uh, but again, we know that there are still claims that are open all the way back to Q4 of 2022. So again, I know it's kind of a half answer in that your mileage may vary, um, but that has been, I would say again, on average, 45 to 60 days is what we've seen for a response. Awesome. That's super helpful. Thank you. All right. Is there a way to pull a status for all of the disputes submitted? So I am not entirely sure if there's like an Excel sheet that you can just pull out of APDP. There might be, um, but you should be able to, when you go into APDP, there's going to be kind of a summary homepage and you can see basically they'll give you the breakdown of what is still in draft status, supplier action, Walmart research approved, denied, et cetera. So I believe you should be able to filter it down that way. I'm not sure if you can necessarily export it out. That's helpful. Thank you. Okay. We have seen a Walmart, we have seen Walmart deductions that don't agree with the signed proof of delivery. But if you look at the inventory received report, the total shortages are different. Let me see that a lot. Um, do you dispute since the POD shows less shortages? So I will say, generally speaking, and, you know, again, I hate to always say your mileage may vary, but generally speaking, the POD is going to be kind of that silver bullet. So if the POD itself is signed short, it is generally going to be pretty hard for you to fight that back. I'm not going to say impossible because we have seen situations where that happens. So I will advise if you have an inventory receipt report, I think it never hurts to throw it over. It never hurts to show them and ask and kind of say, this is what happened. Um, usually what we see sometimes if there's like some weird discrepancy between like receipts and things like that is maybe check if you ship multiple multiple lines on the same PO because you will see overages and shorts on the same PO. So maybe you shipped 10 cases of red, 10 cases of blue. And because of how it was received into the warehouse, it's 15 cases of red, five cases of blue. So it looks like you have an overage on one hand and a shortage on another. Um, those, so I would see if you have a process to reconcile that uh, kind of internally within your own organization, because our recommendation will always be to dispute the overage and bill for the, or dispute the shortage and bill for the overage, if you can do it. Um, now I know Walmart is working, especially on the OTIF side, is working on trying to help to reconcile that on their own automatically. Uh, but on the deduction side, we've not seen as much of that happening. So that could be what might be going on there. Perfect. Okay. And then 
we are coming close on time. So let me try to get the rest of these. Okay. Does supply pike have any information about the agreement of FedEx and Walmart? So I do not, I just saw that come through recently on the Walmart supplier support group, which by the way, if you guys aren't currently uh, members of that group, it's on Facebook. I highly recommend it. We're huge fans of that group uh, at it's on Facebook. You do have to apply uh, in, in that you have to answer a couple of questions to, to join the group. Um, but it's a great resource. It's got about 12,000 different people on it from all sorts of suppliers. Some Walmart folks are on there as well, and they can answer a lot of questions and they are amazing resources. Uh, so I personally don't have any information on the FedEx agreement, but I do know there, there was a post about it, I want to say a day or two. So there might be additional context there. Um, in the supplier support group. So I would recommend checking that out if you guys aren't part of it already. Perfect. Okay. And then last one, what triggers the auto dispute claims reversal? So that is a good question. Uh, from what I understand, as I mentioned, you know, Walmart is doing a lot, of, trying to do a lot of their own reconciliation in the back. So they may, for example, say, I'll give you guys an easy example. So uh, you may get a code 25, which is, it's a shortage type code. And it's basically when you get the entire invoice deducted, usually what happens there is there's a timing issue, right? So, um, you know, you may invoice before, like when when you ship the product out, but maybe it gets delayed in transit or whatever it is. So what Walmart is doing is they're going to look on the MABD and go, Hey, I ordered 20 and I see an invoice for 20, but nothing has come in. So I'm just going to go ahead and short the entire invoice because we got nothing there. Um, but then what happens later on is the product actually does get received into the warehouse. And then they're able to kind of reconcile that product against that PO and they'll go, oh, okay, cool. Um, actually we did get these, you know, 20 cases that we just got them late. And so Walmart will say, okay, based on that, we're going to auto reverse and basically say, okay, we did get the product. It's kind of like the smart match system with Amazon. If any of you guys are shipping with Amazon, um, I will say, you know, Obviously, this is more on Walmart's side in terms of the algorithm that they utilize. Um, so that may not, you know, it may not be perfect every time, um, but that is what I believe is triggering a lot of those auto payments. It's just a reconciliation when, you know, the automation process of like when the product actually comes in, you know, against a certain PO that they thought was closed or short, they'll go, okay, let's match that up and actually automatically reverse that and pay you guys for that. So. Yeah, hopefully that's helpful. Yeah, very helpful. And then uh, we had one more come through. So what is the process of a claim sets and Walmart research for months? That is a very good question. Um, generally speaking, I don't know that there is a official process, uh, but what we have seen kind of success with is essentially reaching out, uh, is utilizing a ticket system. Um, I believe it is in retailing and I'm going to get in trouble because I should know where it is exactly. Uh, but there should be a ticketing system. Oh, Melody, you have some insight there? Yeah. The contact center. Is that the one that you're talking about? Yes. yes. Okay. Oh, perfect. So Melody just dropped that in the chat. Uh, so there is a contact center. You should be able to submit a ticket there and ask for a status update on that. Um, and again, I'm going to shamelessly plug the Walmart supplier support group because I have had also um, seen a lot of people basically ask questions on what other people are seeing in that group um, and have at least get some insight on what is you know still open um, and what a best course of action is. I will say um, one kind of mini pro tip is I don't necessarily think you're buying Buyer is going to be the best person to reach out for this. More often than not, they do not know what is going on on this side of the house. Um, and I know you guys already have kind of limited quote unquote social capital with them. And so, um, you know, you don't want to burn that social capital with them um, just because they're not really going to be able to help you. Um, I know they are the end all be all for a lot of other things, but for the deduction side, they're usually not going to have that much insight. Um, so I would stick to the contact center um, and you should be able to get better feedback that way. Perfect. And then uh, we had another one come through. I know that we're over time, but hopefully we can answer this one pretty yeah. quick and then um, jump right into the product demo. So when you dispute a code 94 or 92, there's generally a code 44 or 60 attached. 
Using supply by, can you dispute only the code 94, 92 and not the code 44 or 60? Yes, you can do that. So you can choose to only dispute the 94 or 92 through supply pike. Um, and then I'm going to drop and choose not to dispute the 44 or 60. I'm going to drop another pro tip for you guys. Um, so the code 60 is usually a handling charge and 94s are returns. Um, and you can actually negotiate the handling charge with your buyer. So generally speaking, uh, the kind of default handling charge is 10%. I've seen that get to, like you you know, negotiate it down to one to 2%, um, especially if it's going to be like a higher priced item or whatever it is, where it's like, guys, it does not make sense uh, for me to pay 10% of the cost of goods on this for, you know, either a light item or a very expensive item. So I would definitely check out your supplier agreements. We have a lot more um, presentations on, on supplier agreements, I believe. Um, so if you're not looking at those regularly, like check those out because uh, you can negotiate allowances with your buyers. Obviously it has to make sense, um, but you don't have to just accept like, oh, you know, de department DA is 10 for 8%. We're going to take 8%. Handling charges 10%. We're going to take 10%. Like you can have those open dialogues with your, with your buyers within reason. Perfect. That's super helpful. All right. Well, do you want to jump into, thank you everyone for joining us. If this is where you jump off, um, then thank you for, for staying with us uh, for as long as you did. But now we're going to dive into the actual presentation on um, our product. So if you're curious to learn more about Supply Pike and how we can help you, um, this is, please feel free to stay for just a couple of, couple of extra minutes. Absolutely. Um, yeah, so I'm going to kind of zip through this, guys. Obviously, as Melanie mentioned, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us directly, um, and we're happy to chat through it with you. But this is uh, our deductions platform. Um, as I mentioned, you guys can see here, we support Walmart, Amazon, Target, and Kroger. But obviously, for the sake of time, I'm going to be focusing on Walmart. Um, we provide automation and visibility, not only on the deduction side, but also on the compliance side as well. So essentially, kind of what this looks like is we are, you know, we have integrations, um, you know, with the retailing data and we are pulling information back on a daily basis. So you're always looking at the most up-to-date data. Um, and essentially what we're going to do is we're going to provide information on, you know, on the dashboard page, obviously kind of dashboardy things, very high level, understanding how many deductions you've received, what is still on the table, what is maybe something you've submitted and you're waiting repayment on and how much you've actually actually got paid back. Um, I think one of the really, really cool things about Supply Pike is that, as I mentioned, you know, kind of broken record, but we really believe on the get better piece. So not just getting paid, but understanding where you're losing money and why. And so we provide a lot of information on, hey, where am I losing money by code, by location, by item, so that you can start to ask, you know, kind of relevant questions. So as an easy example, you know, obviously this is a demo account, but you guys can see, and this is common for most of the suppliers that we work with, um, you know, your top three codes are going to be those shortage related codes, but hey, maybe I also have an outsized quantity discount problem. And did I expect that? If I did, cool. If I didn't, hey, what should I be doing about that? Who should I be talking to? Who should I be asking questions to? Um, we'll help you to track your deductions over time. Uh, so, hey, if you see a specific spike, maybe you shipped in a promo. Um, again, did I expect that? Did I not? If it's just been business as usual for the last, you know, 12 months, then why on earth is June, you know, more than <laughs> triple uh, May as an example? So again, just giving you enough information to start asking the right questions. Uh, we'll show you your claim lines by item number. So a lot of our teams will utilize this to see if there's any outsized items. So again, kind of just making up information, but let's just say, you know, demo item 23 only makes up 10% of our sales, but is somehow making up 25% of our deductions. That is going to signal to me that we are doing something wrong. Either we're shipping it incorrectly, maybe we're labeling it incorrectly uh, for whatever reason, you know, the Walmart DCs are having trouble receiving these products correctly. Hey, now again, I'm going to go ask the right questions with the right folks and go, what are we doing here? What's going on? So just, uh, you know, an example there, dedu deductions by location and even by amount. Um, why I think this one in particular is powerful is because a lot of times, as we mentioned, very, very tedious process, unfortunately, 
a lot of times suppliers have just this dollar threshold where they'll say, hey, if it's under $100 or $250 or whatever it is, it is just not worth my team's time to go after because we would rather go after the you know $5,000 claims, which is completely logical and makes a lot of sense. But a lot of times when you don't, you know, because you, you get nickel and dimed here and there and you go, oh, it's fine. We'll write that off. We'll write that off. Next thing you know, you look back and, hey, we just wrote off $30,000 last month when we shouldn't have or shouldn't have had to. So I think it's really important to help visualize the dollar impact for, you know, if you are writing stuff off under a certain threshold, what does that look like to your P&L? Um, so from there, you know, this is kind of the real meat and potatoes of the app. So we will pull in all of your deduction codes. Uh, we can go back as far as two years because that's as far back as Walmart allows us to go. Obviously, we have extremely strong filtering and sorting for the purposes of today. Won't kind of get too far into that. Uh, but let's just say I'm going to go ahead and pull up a code 25 that I've gotten. And when I click into that, you're going to see all of the information related to that particular claim. So rather than you having to go into those four different applications, kind of stitch it all together in an Excel sheet somewhere, we've done all of the manual work for you. So you've got your claim information, your order information, check details, vendor number, check lines, deduction history, et cetera. So you can see all of it kind of in one place. Um, and then really where the magic of the app happens is, as I mentioned, that proof documentation, the silver bullet, usually. Um, we have over 100 integrations with different 3PLs and carriers across the US. So we can actually automatically pull in the relevant documentation for every claim that you fight. So let's just say it is a code 25 shortage related claim or you know, 201-20035. We will comb through all the documents once we get the integration look for any document with OCR, which is optical character recognition technology, look through anything that has this number and automatically attach it for you so that you are not having to comb through, you know, your giant Google drive or the stack of paper at the warehouse or whatever it is. Um, yeah. So from there, you know, basically we've got all the information that you need. You literally just hit the submit dispute button and that'll get fired off to APDP on your behalf. Um, and then kind of the beauty of this is, of course, you can do bulk submissions. So you can do up to 100 at a time. Um, you can even filter it to say, hey, you need to make sure that it is ready to go. So it has proof documentation. We'll do the automatic sorting for you. You can select these 28, hit submit disputes, and you're off to the races. Um, we also have complete automation. So you can even choose to not touch it at all if you don't want to. So we work with different teams. Some folks are like, I want to have my hand on the wheel at all times. Some people are Tesla mode. So, you know, we basically provide op automation up to your level of comfort. Uh, a lot of times what will happen is we'll have folks that will say, hey, I want automation for 22, 24, and 25, uh, as long as they're invalid, likely invalid, um, and I want it to be under a certain dollar amount. So if it's under $250, I don't want to look at it, send it over. If it's over $250, I want my eyes on it just to make sure that we're not missing anything there. Um, so again, kind of automation up to your level of comfort. So yeah, that is kind of us in a nutshell. Um, I'm going to stop here for the purposes of time, but thank you guys for hanging out with us. Um, I always recommend last thought, um, if you're not working with Supply Bike today, so we offer a free trial where you can actually pull your data in and look at it. I'm a big fan of it because it literally costs you nothing, no obligations. It's not like pull in a free trial and you're stuck with us for six months. We'll pull the data in. If it makes sense, great. Let's have the next step in the conversation. If it doesn't make sense, no problem. We'll just shake hands and say, hey, maybe we'll try next time. So if you're interested in, in seeing what that looks like, a free analysis, um, I believe, Mel, we usually will follow up after um, the presentation with information on how to do that, right? Exactly. Yeah. Um, and also feel free to, to email us. I can send, I'll just send it in the chat right now, but it's sales at supplybike.com would probably be the, the easiest way to get set up. So feel free to reach out there and we can get you set up. Awesome. Perfect. Well, thank, thank you guys. So thank you. Thank you for all the amazing content and thank you everyone who stayed and um, yeah, I hope you have a great rest of your Thursday. Bye.